Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Steel Mint Events. I'm Shreya Devakaran, and today's interview will be co-hosted with my colleague Akshay Sharma, our analyst for global ferrous scrap markets. Joining us today is Dr. Baris Bikir Sifati, Head of Strategic Initiatives and Raw Materials Market Analysis at the World Steel Association. Mr. Sifati is currently responsible for leading the association's research activities on steel making materials markets and projects aiming to deepen the association's understanding of the most pressing strategic issues the global industry is currently faced with. He has conducted international level economic and market studies on topics that stand at the top of research agenda for steel and steel making materials over the last 10 years. He received Bachelor of Science degree in Industrial Man Engineering from the Middle East Technical University in Turkey and a PhD degree in economics from Tilburg University in Netherlands. He currently lives in both Turkey and Belgium. Welcome, Mr. Sipsi. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for having me here and the great introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to sound my opinion on the important challenges that our industry is currently faced with. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think these kind of webinars, as we are having now, are uh, providing a very good platform uh, to share and exchange opinion with our industry and also with our stakeholders. So thank you very much for using this. Uh, definitely, thing. definitely. The discussion is the current situation of the global scrap market with the prevailing lockdown situation across the major markets and the availability of global scrap in future. Uh, we will also uh, take a close look at how COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the overall industry, the tightening of scrap supply, as well as the diminishing demand at the same time, and also have, a, uh, have an outlook of the scrap market. Uh, to start with, uh, Mr. Kifti, uh, do you see the global scrap availability tightening further in the near term? The short answer is no. I don't expect to see any further tightening. Uh, we are already seeing indications of a gradual reopening of major economies uh, all around the world. And you know, when we focus on the scrap supply in particular, uh, we know that the Western European countries and other industrialized uh, countries like Japan and North American countries play a very important role, especially in these uh, countries, we are seeing either the economies are uh, or either the uh, reopening of the economy commenced in the recent weeks or is expected to commence uh, very soon. So from this perspective, I think the second quarter of this year will represent the worst, the trough in economic activities. And going forward, third quarter, we hope to see some stabilization and maybe a partial recovery. And hopefully in the fourth quarter of this year, with the support of pent-up demand, we all hope to see a strengthening recovery. So again, Q2 will hopefully be uh, the trough and we expect to see uh, some improvement, improvement going forward. Uh, however, we all know that this expected recovery is not a, uh, how to say, uh, will not be smooth, will probably be very bumpy. Uh, we should all be ready uh, for extreme or let me put it in a different word, severe volatility along this recovery path. Uh, uh, we all hear about the risk of a second wave or further waves and there is no guarantee that these further waves can be yeah, lower in scale or, or in reach uh, than the first wave uh, we all had to go through. So yes, there can be downturns and uh, there is no guarantee that these downturns will be uh, lower in scale. So there is the probability that uh, we can see lower economic activity and lower scrap availability, but probably this is not the base case scenario. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's be hopeful regarding that. And uh, also, uh, how is the scenario of US and Europe uh, scrap recycling yards presently? Uh, any other major challenges which they are facing currently? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, this is a difficult period for all businesses and uh, when we look into the scrap business, uh, I think just like all or most other sectors, there is the possibility to see 
but first of all, extreme volatility we've already mentioned. So like many other businesses, they'll need to manage uh, these highly volatile times. Uh, then there can be periods of uh, low margins, low profits, so they'll need to endure that probably. And throughout this period, throughout this volatility, I think the biggest challenge for them would be ensuring the stability of their uh, supply, both in terms of quantity and quality. So I think this is, might be the biggest challenge for uh, all scrapyards around the world. Uh, we have we had heard that uh, many of the scrap recycling yards in Europe uh, had you know uh, cut down their operations or many of the sites they had uh, you know cut down the recycling operation. So uh, uh, what is the estimate for that? Uh, like in, in in how many months can we see the situation uh, getting overcome? Um, it's it's not easy to quantify the impact to begin with because uh, first of all this is a supply shock so the shutdowns. Uh, affect scrap collection so, so the scrap intake uh, should have been impacted very heavily for uh, many scrap yards all around Europe so the, so first of all the supply uh, there is the supply side of it and then there is the demand side of it so as the uh, steel using sectors or the demand from steel using sectors uh, took a deep dive and still making operations especially in Europe uh, have been idled. So the demand for steel making from steel making for scrap uh, also dropped sharply. So there is the demand side of it. So it's not really easy to uh, make predictions, but I think uh, my comments on your first question that Q2 is probably, second quarter is probably the worst and we should see a gradual improvement going forward also applies to this question. Okay. Mr. Sifti, could you throw some light on how the impact of the pandemic has been on crude steel output, iron ore and coal supply? Ah, yeah. Well, um, you know, as World Steel Association, we are trying to uh, monitor the situation and also inform our industry and public in general about what the impact of the pandemic has been on crude steel output. And also we provided some analysis on uh, what's the situation with our uh, suppliers, mainly iron ore, chalking coal and scrap. And on the steel output side, there is a duality between uh, the performance of China and the rest of the world. Uh, Chinese crude steel output uh, has been quite resilient throughout this period, uh, except for a very short period, maybe the second half of, through the second half of February, uh, when we saw a, 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 a low decline, a, a short drop in the Chinese daily crude steel uh, average output, uh, then we saw, uh, and, and, and you know, as we all know, back then we were seeing a, a very weak demand from uh, Chinese steel making, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, still using industries, surging inventories. Uh, but following this very brief period, already in March, China's crude steel output uh, stabilized and then uh, started to show some recovery. And we are already hearing good news from China that the inventories are normalizing. Uh, but when we turn to world excluding China, then we see a totally different picture. The impact uh, of the pandemic uh, was felt in March. March was the first month. And even the first month impact, the statistics, crude production statistics for this first month, first month, I'm sorry, uh, showed that the impact of the pandemic on steel making uh, was severe. In Europe in particular, we see uh, double digit declines. In uh, Italy, a very big decline in crude steel production. Uh, in other uh, major steelmaking countries like Japan, Russia, uh, US, we see big drops um, and probably uh, we'll see further drops in the, in the um, next month or two. And when we turn to uh, steelmaking uh, material suppliers, uh, mainly iron ore, coking coal and uh, scrap, actually we've discussed scrap uh, briefly already, uh, but we can say that that is probably uh, the hardest uh, impacted uh, steel making material uh, because of the difficulty in the collection of scrap and also because of the uh, 
impact of the pandemics on economic activities, also the impact on the business uh, investment confidence and uh, consumer confidence. So we are seeing investment activities are being delayed. Uh, probably consumers will be delaying the purchase of still containing goods like cars and you know like domestic appliances. So this had a big impact on uh, scrap generation and collection. But when we turn to uh, iron ore and coking coal, this time thanks to the consolidated structure of the supply and especially the uh, dominant role played by Australia, we see that the mining operations and the corresponding logistic op logistics operations in Australia have remained resilient and this helped a lot with the supply of our steel making materials. Mm -hmm. uh, when we turn to other important suppliers like Brazil, uh, so far we see that the uh, mining value chain, iron ore value chain ha has remained intact, although there are considerable risks. Uh, North America is an important coking coal supplier. Uh, we are seeing um, there are many idlings, especially in North America, but also elsewhere. And in some smaller suppliers such as India, which is an important pellet supplier, but in the total seaborne iron ore market, it is playing a relatively minor role. South Africa, one of the smaller, but still playing a very, very significant role. And Canada, uh, we saw significant disruptions due to the nationwide lockdowns or uh, specific measures aiming to reduce uh, operating rates at, at uh, mine. So uh, in some of the countries, yes, the impact uh, has been significant, but in the major supplier like Australia uh, in, 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 for iron ore in Brazil, uh, we are seeing that the operations are uh, running without seeing a, a major impact yet. Yes. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Kifki, uh, as you mentioned that among all the steel making raw materials, uh, scrap will be one of the hardest hit uh, commodities and the uh, scrap collection and scrap condition everything being uh, impacted uh, it will you know uh, uh, tighten the supply as, as it has already happened but uh, considering that uh, the uh, finished steel demand in uh, most of the major import markets that scrap importing markets the finished steel mm -hmm. demand will uh, come down uh, because of the covid-19 situation mm -hmm. so will the uh, uh, reducing demand of steel balance out the low scrap availability and uh, hold the price level mm -hmm. Uh, it's very difficult to say. I mean, it's very difficult to quantify the net impact or uh, to comment on how the balance will play out. Nevertheless, we can we are able to look into the situation and try to identify what the um, main factors uh, that will be playing a role uh, in the uh, evolution of the scrap markets going forward. I think we should, we should start with mentioning that uh, international scrap markets are well-functioning markets. Uh, the periods of uh, volatility, or uh, if you would like to call it in that way, imbalance, are met with quick responses on the supply side or on the price side. There are several studies showing that the scrap supply in major uh, supplying countries is quite quite price elastic, uh, for example. So this is one thing. Scrap international scrap supply uh, is a well functioning market, and there is no reason. Well, th th there will be. We can expect that um, there will be difficulties going forward, uh, as I'll try to explain. But to begin with, this is a well functioning market. Well, what, are, what could be the difficulties going forward? Well, first of all, the, we are waiting for or we are expecting a recovery. Uh, but the pace of recovery in different regions or in different sectors can show very significant uh, variability. So, and in that case, there can be mismatches uh, between the demand and supply from different sectors or uh, uh, in between the recovery of supply in the important suppliers and the recovery of demand in the important uh, scrap importers. So uh, as we've mentioned several times already, uh, we are faced with uh, quite extraordinary times and the uncertainty is quite high. So there will be 
severe volatility prob probably along this recovery path. Uh, and that's why uh, maybe rather than focusing on what the balance will be, uh, it would be better to focus. It would be it would be better to focus on managing this um, uh, highly volatile times. I think uh, one other factor that might be worthwhile mentioning is uh, the difference between uh, the construction sector and the manufacturing sectors. So uh, we might see that uh, some countries willing to support the uh, economies uh, can uh, announce infrastructure programs which would support the construction activities. There will also be similar programs for manufacturing, but uh, there might be differences uh, in the scale of this impact. Uh, and if construction activities show a, a quicker recovery, uh, and uh, if this requires, a, a, or, or, or let me put it in a different way, if we see a bigger demand coming from construction for construction steel, and we know that construction steel is uh, uh, produced usually at electric furnaces uh, by using scrap. Uh, then there might this might be a factor, uh, a kind of a mismatch, let me say, uh, between the demand for scrap and the supply of scrap. So this might be another factor that uh, will be playing a role going forward. Mr. Thank Sikhi, you. could you share your long-term outlook in, uh, on scrap availability? Uh -huh. Well, in the long term, uh, we expect to see continued strong growth in the global scrap availability. Uh, we know that in the 80s, 90s, in 2000s, um, we saw very strong growth in the steel consumption uh, globally, but particularly in uh, what we call the emerging economies like China, India, and other uh, emerging markets. Uh, now this period, almost 30 years of strong growth in steel consumption uh, will be reflected in a continued growth in scrap availability again, especially in these emerging countries. So globally, uh, we estimate that uh, scrap availability is around 750 to 800 million tons currently. And we expect to see this increasing to uh, more than a billion tons by 2030 and around 1.4 billion tons by uh, 2050. So we expect to see a 500 million tons or even higher growth in uh, one of our main uh, steel making uh, material. Of course, the implications of this uh, will be quite significant. We expect to see uh, increasing scrap uh, use uh, for, for both main routes of steel making and this might also support, uh, support uh, electric steel making uh, in some uh, regions. Okay, Mr. Sitsi, thank you so much for your time today and briefing us on the global scrap situation and the steel making. Uh, you are very welcome. I thank you very much again. So, our viewers, thank you very much for watching. Do stay tuned to Steelmint events for all the latest podcasts and webinars. Goodbye.